This is an instructional video on nasoenteric tube insertion, specifically for nets that are used for feeding purposes. My name's Andrew Van Lint, I'm a haematology registrar in Callum. And I'm Gabby, I'm one of the interns at Callum. In this demonstration, I'll be playing the patient, and Gabby will be playing the proceduralist. Before your procedure, there are a number of steps that are important. Firstly is verbally consenting and educating the patient on the procedural steps. And in some cases where the patient is unable to give their consent, third party consent must be documented separately. The equipment that you'll require will be the nasoenteric tube, a lubricant, the net adhesive dressing to go on the nose, water in a cup, a straw, an emesis bag, and when it can be accessed, cofenalcane spray, which will reduce the epistaxis risk and patient discomfort. We didn't have that available for this particular demonstration. The first step is to perform hand hygiene and don the gloves. The patient should be positioned sitting up, ideally at the edge of the bed. The tip of the tube is held against the tip of the nose and then led over the ear and measured down to the level of the zipper sternum at the end of the sternum. This is your target insertion length. and then give the patient the emesis bag and the cup of the water with the straw. And these steps can be interchanged. In this case, we've chosen to give the emesis bag and the cup of water to the patient prior to measuring the tube. We then apply lubricant to the tip of the nasoenteric tube. This can be done by directly inserting the tip into the lubricant packet or by pouring out and rolling it in the edge over another surface. Look up so I can look into your nostril first. Thank you. And now if you just relax your head down again. Insert the tip of the net into the patient's nostril, perpendicular to the facial plane, until resistance is overcome. And this will indicate that the tube has bent inferiorly into the nasopharynx at the back of the nose. So if you could take a sip of water. At this point, you can get the patient to hold, hold the water in their mouth and tip their chin downwards. Using a count of three in the term swallow, time rapid progression of the tube into the esophagus until the target length is reached. It's important to note that this must not be forcibly advanced, otherwise damage can occur. We progress the tube down until the target length is reached. Are you doing okay? Yep. If the target length is not reached, it's unlikely to have reached the stomach and should be removed and repeated. Keep swallowing. Once you've reached the target length, you should check the patient discomfort. How are you feeling? Yep, that's um, it's better than when we started. And then secure the net to the nose using the adhesive dressing. And the guiding wire must remain in situ until it's been cleared for use. Once the net has been secured to the nose using the adhesive dressing, you can attach the end of the net to the patient's clothing using a safety pin or adhesive tape, which hasn't been done in this particular video. It's also useful to apply a date and time sticker to the nasoenteric tube, and this will correlate with your documentation. And this can be combined in the later step of the ready to use sticker after the x-ray has been performed to confirm positioning. Following the procedure, it's very important to request an urgent chest x-ray specifically for net positioning confirmation. Once the chest x-ray has been performed, you should review the chest x-ray report and the images directly. And this should confirm that the net is aligned to cross the carina and clearly extends below the diaphragm. Ideally, this is checked by two medical officers, that being the radiologist who reports the film and ideally the procedurals who inserted the net tube. You should then document the confirmation of positioning in the patient's notes and apply a position check sticker to the net and remove the guide wire so it's ready for use. This can be then verbally handed over to nursing staff that it's ready to use for feeding or medication administration purposes. A few notes on nasoenteric tube insertion. If any difficulty with advancing or not enough length is inserted, the tube should always be withdrawn and a fresh attempt made. Two or more people who view the x-ray images decreases the risk of error in confirming the position of the tube. 
Any doctor adjusting the tube position, which is sometimes required after insertion, should be viewing the x-ray themselves. Feeding via nasoenteric tube should not cause pain or distress, especially at low rates. Symptoms displayed can be bloating, nausea and diarrhoea, but should not include pain. Pain should always be regarded as an alarm and feeds ceased immediately to reassess for possible tube issues.